Hey guys, uh, Ralph Copter here again, and uh, I do have another stack update actually. I uh, just got a, uh, another two coins in the mail today, and we'll get started. Um, got another MS70 Panda. Uh, this one is absolutely flawless. Uh, case is in really good shape too. Um, and this is the Chinese. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is the Chinese country label to separate it from, uh, you know, there's a Great Wall label and a couple other things, panda labels. Um, anyway, I thought this coin was absolutely beautiful. And uh, as you can see in the reflection, um, those little spots are on the case. There's absolutely nothing on the coin itself. It's in amazing condition. And uh, so anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so this now takes my graded panda collection up to five. So I've got those two 69s that I showed you a couple weeks ago, two 70s that I've shown you over the last uh, few days, the last week or so, and that one. So I now have three 2014s. Two 2013s, and uh, so yeah, that's my panda update. And I also have another coin that I wanted to show you. And you know, I was thinking to myself, um, I forget if it was last weekend or the week before, but I was thinking to myself, you know, we sit here, everybody agrees that Perth meant silver is awesome. Everybody loves kookaburros and koalas and lunars and all this stuff, you know. And yet, when I look through my slab box, I don't actually have any of it, uh, you know, graded. So, bam, we got this. A uh, 2014 MS-70 kookaburro. And uh, same thing with this one. This coin is absolutely flawless. Um, no spots, none of that. Of course, then again, I don't really think that Perth Mint stuff is notorious for spots anyway. I haven't really heard about that, unlike, uh, you know, Canadian Mint. And I've heard some pandas, uh, spot. But anyway, I thought that was cool stuff. So as far as Perth Mint silver, graded silver, uh, of course... You saw the uh, the dragons that appeared yesterday, and uh, so these are great. I also have this, which I showed previously. It's a tenth ounce uh, koala, and this was actually my first graded piece of Perth Mint silver. Got this a while ago. A couple months ago, I think. And I've shown it in other videos, but it's been a while, so I figured I'd show this again. Um, I thought that was cool, though. So, that also takes my Perth Mint Silver up to five. And, uh... So anyway, guys, that pretty much does it for the new stuff. Um, the only other thing I wanted to ask about, and this is something that, you know, feel free to, uh... To you know, mention in the, the the discussion and you know, make a comment um, on the video. And hey, if you want, you know, make a video response. I don't care. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are on MS70 versus Proof70 versus MS69. Um, Proof69. Yeah, I've got a little bit of everything. I mean, you know, I've got you know, here's a Proof69 Kennedy. You know, um, but I think I've got a ton of Proof 69 now that I think about it. Yeah, here's another DCAM 69. Um, so I've got tons of them. And the pandas actually were, you know, half and half. I mean, two of them are 69s. Of course, what my, what my question is, is do you think it's worth it to buy 69s versus, you know, I've heard different schools of thought here that, you know, no, 
you know, save your money and buy 170 and be done with it. I've heard other people say, no, you know, more is better. So buy, you know, if you can get 269s for the price of a 70, get the 269s. Um, I'm not really convinced one way or the other what the correct answer is. Uh, I guess maybe it, the correct answer is whatever you're comfortable with. But um, at the same time, when I look at the population reports, because I've checked PCGS and NGC's websites and, and the census data and population reports and all that. And, uh, you know, to be honest, um, I mean, when you look at the numbers, depending on the coin, sometimes the MS-70s, you know, for for every 569s that they grade, there might be 170. You know, sometimes it's 10 to 1. Um, I mean, some grades, you know, there's literally a handful of examples. Um, so... I mean, obviously, that's really going to play into the, uh, you know, the pricing there. But, you know, from what I can tell, when it comes to bullion coins, because bullion seems to grade pretty high. I mean, aside from maple leaves, which um, are probably a bad example, because maple leaves, I've got a 68 and a 69. Um, and the funny thing is, is like, I almost can't even find these coins in 70s like there's almost no 70 maple leaves out there um you know i i showed this previously i have a proof 70 maple leaf uh, i paid a, a lot of money compared with what a proof 70 or a or an ms 70 anything else would would cost i mean yeah i just i the funny thing is, I've heard that bullion grades high just in general, but for some reason the Canadian Mint just can't seem to get a lot of MS-70s out there. You, you hardly ever see them on eBay. I had to fight tooth and nail for these two, you know, a 68 and a 69. Um, I had to bid like crazy on them. And uh, so anyway, I, I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Um, you know, does anybody collect graded coins? <laughs> And if so, what's your favorite grade? So let me know. Uh, as always, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that. All right. Take it easy.